questions. Uh, so sticking with that two-prong <coughs> question, uh, what do you feel about charter schools? And then second, uh, what changes, if any, do you think need to be made to how we assess um, students in the state? Okay, first question is charter schools. That's always the political question of the hour. I do not support charter schools at this point in Maine at all. And the reason I don't is we have versions of that. It's just the main version. It's sort of a political popular football. It tries to separate Democrats and Republicans. I would recommend that you think about what they're about. In Maine, we do have the School of Math and Science. We used to have unions, and we still do, which is public school choice. I have four children. They went to four different high schools. I love that. I love public school choice. And because, and then some of them went to a town academy. And so if charter schools are designed to help failing schools, uh, in Maine, we're not Chicago and we're not New York City. One of my youngest children <coughs> taught in the Bronx. I would do anything in the Bronx, a charter school or any other thing. But right now in Maine, <coughs> schools do not have enough money. And if you drain the money, and what happens when you take my grandchildren out of that school in Portland and put them off in a little charter school? What do you leave behind? People who can't. If something's wrong with my public schools and a charter school can fix it, let's do that for everybody, not just for the people who go to charter schools. Now, what was your second question? The second one was, uh, what do you think, if anything, needs to be done in terms of how we assess students in the state, in terms of test scores, standardized test scores? Well, that, that's a very good question. It's about how do we assess students. Uh, first of all, the governors of around this country are trying to create some national standards. And that's probably a good idea, but I looked at some of the things that, did you see on television last night what you had to know in math in the eighth grade? I said, oh dear, I hate to go back to do that. But the, the point is that you won't always live in Maine. And as much as I want you to stay in Maine, I want you to go and come back. I want you to learn. I want you to live in Europe. I want you to travel. I want you to do what you want to do. But you have to have some common course of learning. So we need to mesh what some of these national standards are. You don't teach to a test, that's not what I'm saying. But you have standards, and when you create a school with a learning environment, and the parents know what's expected, the teachers know what's expected, the students live up to what you expect them. <coughs> if you think these kids are going to perform, they're not. If you ask a lot of them, they're going to step up. So standards, if we don't just get hooked into it. I don't know, I went to law school late in life. Uh, I must tell you, the first time I had to take the bar exam, I hadn't been into, I'd been out of school so long, I overthought things. They'd give me four choices, uh, a law question, a little fact pattern, four choices. Two of them were stupid, you knew to get rid of those, but two of them, oh, I think and I think and I think. I didn't get it right the first time, but then you know what? I got a little computer tutorial, and I learned how to take that test. So I am now a lawyer, but I, don't, I think I would have been just as good a lawyer without doing that. So I don't want to reduce our learning. I want you, the law school value was learn to think like a lawyer. <coughs> it didn't teach you how to fill out forms, but think like a lawyer. Ask questions. And so I just fear that the, the, the kids that don't do good, they just pass them aside, they never graduate, they never get a diploma, what happens to them? So I would not have it as an exit exam, but I want them to succeed and go on to at least one year. Community colleges, Army, Navy, I don't really care. People need the skills that they need, and when they need them all their lives, you're not going to, you are not, you're going to be changing jobs. I know you think you know what you're going to do when you graduate, but my guess is you're going to change it, and you should be able to. Um, my question is regarding um, LD 1552 and the fourth project. Don't do numbers. I don't do them well. What's the all topic? Right. I, I, I'm getting to that. But um, this, is, this regards bonded workers. Um, and as it states, a bonded work, if, you, if you have a bonded work on, on your land, you must leave the tree growth program and pay the penalty. Um, the Rumford paper mill just recently, this summer shut down, or last summer shut down paper machine number 10, and 70 people were laid off. And by, re by making it more difficult for um, a forest workers to, to bring in these bonded workers from Canada, I'm um, worried that we won't have the supply um, to, to meet the needs of the paper companies, which is why the number 10 machine in Rumford was shut down. Um, what would you propose, or how, let me try that again. How would you, how can we support our forest products industry when we're considering making it more difficult for them to get the supplies that they need? 
Well, we have to decide if we really are making it more difficult. I serve in the Maine Senate with a young man from uh, Allagash. He is one of those workers that you're talking about. His frustrations are he is not able to compete always because many of these workers from Canada, for example, have the health insurance and they have a lot of things that prop them up and he can't compete. So he struggles to find work, and that's the issue we always face. There's, it, I wish things were black and white. We want the paper mill to work, and we'd love to get that machine up and running, but how do we also take care of Maine people who are trying to earn a living in the woods? Uh, one thing I would say about that, uh, ma'am, is that Canada Falls and over towards the West Branch, where a lot of these bonded workers are, Allagash is three hours away. And that, that's not a community. Oh, no, I wasn't talking about him working where you're talking oh. about. I'm talking about him as an example mm -hmm. of a Maine person who wants to work in the wood and is willing to work very, very hard. And this is what's wonderful about being in the legislature. I, when I was first elected, I thought, that's easy. Red means no and green means yes. And the more you learn about these issues, you learn that they're very tough. Talk about sick leave for workers. That's been a very, what shall I say, loudly debated and maligned piece of legislation. All it said was that if you are a worker in Maine and you get sick, that you could have some time <coughs> to be sick without losing your pet. That is not going to pass because people are very concerned that that is too much of an imposition on the main economy. The other thing to think about there, <coughs> there was a time when there was no protection for children. Go look at the old labor pictures. There was no OSHA. There was no minimum wage. All of these things are worker protections and the idea is to try to find the balance because everybody wants people to have jobs, but they also want to protect the workers. So that's a struggle that you face all the time. And no bill is as simple as it appears, but I certainly hear your concerns. And uh, I think that's still being debated, isn't it? Yes, it is. Thank you.